Hey guys, in today's video we're going to take a closer look at the Fujinon 23mm f1.4 lens. Now this uh, lens is the f1.4 version. I don't have the 23mm f2, but I do have the 35mm f2 and you can kind of, it's very similar if not the same in size, so you can see what, how it compares to in size with the 23mm f2 lens. It's obviously going to be bigger, but you know it's f1.4. There's a pretty big difference between an f2 lens and an f1.4, right? So it does have some weight to it, but it's not overly heavy. Um, and I think it pairs very, very good with the Fuji X-T series bodies, the X-T2, X-T3, X-T1s. I'm going to go ahead and mount it. And you can see what it looks like with the X-T2 with the lens hood off. Got a really good balance to it, so it's a good match. You can use it with any X mount lens, like the smaller bodies, the X-T20, the 30s, really any of the X mounts. It's just, when you put a bigger lens on it, it does kind of change the dynamics and weight and balance of the camera. But with the X-T series, it's got just enough to give it a good balance. Uh, it's got the flower tulips type of uh, lens hood. These are good, it protects the lens, but it, to me it makes the camera look bigger and feel bigger, and it gets in the way sometimes, especially if you're getting the lens cap on and off. Sometimes I run with these, sometimes I don't. But if I do, I'll put a filter on the front just to protect the front element if I do leave it off. And this one has a 62 millimeter, if you're putting a, a UV filter or um, you know polarizer or anything, 62 millimeter is the size. And as long as you have one larger, you can use a step down ring. Talking about rings, this has a manual focus clutch and you got to engage it, disengage it. I'm not a fan of this type of system. A lot of people do like it and it works great, but what I don't like about it is um, on the Fuji camera, you can configure one of these buttons to be on um, focus mode. So you can leave it in manual focus, um, but also autofocus. So you have best of both worlds. You can autofocus when you want and you can manual focus when you want. But that usually doesn't work or does not work when you have a clutch. It's either engaged manual focus or it's disengaged. You can't have your cake and eat it too, which that's one of my, my negatives for the lens. And it's really the only negative for this lens. It's got great image quality. Um, it goes from f1.4. So if you're looking at a full frame equivalent, <clears throat> this would be like a 35 millimeter f2 on a full frame. But it goes from f1.4 all the way to f16. Um, the images are great. The focus speed is very good, even in low light. Um, if you have the X-T3 body, which has a faster processor, it'll actually focus even a little better on really all the lenses. This is the X-T2, but it's no slouch. Um, I've never had a complaint. Now the 56 millimeter F1.2 and low light, it struggles a bit for me on the X-T2, but the 23, I never experienced um, that kind of an issue, or at least it's never been enough to bother me and I haven't noticed it. Uh, I'm going to show you guys some, some pictures. I've had this for about three years and I used it very heavily when I first got it. And then I started using the 16 millimeter more and more as far as walk around. This lens is a great walk around lens. It's, it's one of those, you know, do it all lenses. If I'm walking around on the street or taking portraits, really anything, the 23 millimeter is up to the challenge. It really is a, a multi-tool. But a lot, of, a lot of lately, I've been trying to challenge myself with different focal lengths. Instead of being you know, the all-in-one 23 millimeter or in a full frame equivalent to 35, I've been trying to mix it up a little bit, trying to you know, get a little bit tighter, going with a longer focal range. But, um, but this one will, will do it all. Now, although this is a multitasker, for me, its primary purpose is portrait photography. If I'm going out um, for the day and shooting portraits of people, there's two lenses in my bag. 23 millimeter f1.4, this lens here, and the 56 1.2. Between those two lenses, I can pretty much do anything I want. This is my wide. Um, it get, you can get up close personal without being having your subjects uh, distorted. Uh, it's a great lens. Um, you can even get up close and the image quality from the reviews. I've never actually owned the 23 
F2, but I have seen some pictures where the image quality of this 1.4 is, is just better, especially in the closer distances. Um, I like this lens, it's a great purchase, and if you have the X-T2, X-T3, X-T1 bodies, it's a great fit. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys, like I always do, some, some out-of-the-camera JPEGs and some of the pictures I've, I've taken with this camera, just to give you an idea of what it's capable. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. This first set of pictures were taken at this local Comic-Con, it was called Motor City Comic-Con. My son, my nephew, and I, we headed over there. It's the first time I've ever been to a Comic-Con show. It was pretty interesting. Um, I, we stopped at Bagger Dave's, and I was doing a no-carb thing. Everybody likes a food pitcher, and I snapped a shot of my burger without the bun. So you just can get an uh, idea of, of what it does, a wide open at 1.4. And this is without a flash, um, 125, and uh, ISO is only at 320. So that 1.4 really really comes in handy when you need it. Um, so moving on, this is just a, a picture just to give you a sense of how crazy it was. And I found out later from some people at work that attended that this line to get in was just one part of the long, crazy line. I guess people waited for two hours outdoors. Luckily for me, my, my nephew had a pass, so we were able to skip all of that. So um, I, I there's no way I'd wait in this crazy line so this isn't really a, a, a good picture just give you a sense of how crazy um, it was as far as the amount of people that were there and there was a it's, it's called uh, used to be called Novi Showplace but now it's called the Suburban um, Showplace moving on and this is again to give you a, a picture of the environment and um, there's just a lot of people there and I and this isn't about Comic-Con it just I didn't see a whole lot of draw um, I guess if you like the comic book, but it was it was kind of twofold. One is about comic books, obviously, but the other was more of like pop culture. Um, they had some some signings and photographs from some TV shows, some actors from TV shows and stuff, and that was really like fifty percent of it. People like spent all this money and on getting a picture taken with a famous person. But anyway, back to the picture. One one thing that is very very cool about places like Comic Con. And um, and other thing, and other um, uh, places like it is, you can walk around and take pictures of people, and not even think twice of it. If you're kind of shy at taking photos like me, um, you can just walk up to someone and take their picture because they're all dressed up. They want to take get their picture taken, or you can simply ask them. And and everybody that I asked were just like totally cool with it. And um, this is a picture I just took um, in these. These guys, uh, I don't even know what most of the TV shows they're from, or if they're making their own costumes, but it was kind of cool. Um, I, you know, I, this is F14 again. Um, F14, that extra half a stop is is um, there when you need it. It comes in handy, and uh, I was able to keep my ISO. And and most of these pictures, if not all of them, at this event, um, I was at one one twenty fifth of a shutter speed. And that's kind of my go to um, indoors. Um, it it prevents me from having blurry pictures from due to uh, movement uh, because people aren't really running fast or anything so 125 seems to be um, uh, or seems to work really well for me um, again these guys were dressed up as ghostbusters and another one wide open at 1.4 and I just took this as a background there's a lot of one, one of the things that I really enjoyed at this comic-con was the artist you could buy originals. I mean, they're not like, you know, famous artists. They're just, um, you know, people that are just doing it as a hobby. And uh, some of them are really do a lot of cool work. So I almost bought a couple. I just didn't have any place to, to put it. Anything I liked probably wasn't inappropriate. It was either about death or um, stuff like that, which I, I didn't buy one. But they had some cool artists there. And uh, I don't know why it doesn't represent, at least on my screen on the iPad, maybe when I um, do the uh, the final convert, it'll look different. The colors, um, they're not popping as much on my iPad when I'm when I'm doing this, uh, you know, compilation. But on my Mac, um, they're much more contrasty. They're much more um, vibrant. But um, continuing on, uh, this one was 2.8, um, and I bumped the ISO on this one to 1600. <laughs> these people uh, you know, I don't know if it was it must have been the, one of the zombie movies um, uh, but yeah they um, people really get into it 
and um, you know ISO 2500 but even at ISO 2500 the, um, the you know the pictures are really good I try not to go too much higher than that just a per personal preference and I have a 2.8 and you'll see me adjusting the the f-stop um, a bit depending on what I'm going for um, if it's one subject mul multiple subjects and what have you and uh, her I asked her hey can I you know take a, um, a picture but you know uh, again this is this is a place where you know if you're uncomfortable asking people to take photos that's why they're there or at least most of them uh, that's why they're there they're dressed up and uh, um, they actually encourage it they're just I couldn't tell the difference between the people that were dressed up and in, in attendance versus the people that actually were there in costume because they do actually pay a few people that walk around um, so everybody's really cool um, and then some charity events too this was these people were there for some charity event but if U of M's big here and uh, there is a um, uh, Star Wars character dressed up in U of M and Michigan State um, pretty cool uh, this guy's Mork, uh, Mork and Mindy, I think, if I'm remembering this old uh, show. Um, but um, you know, if you, I'm not going to uh, call out every single one of these, um, the settings, unless something stands out. But um, you'll see it on the right side of the of the screen. I put them all up for you. And this this is one is a, a paid person. He didn't move the whole day. Um, you know, he's taking pictures with kids or adults for that matter. Um, and then moving on, uh, that was Comic Con, and then there's a second um, set of pictures that um, Greenfield Village. It's a, um, a museum by me, and there's actually two parts. There's the museum and the village, and it's all the uh, Henry Ford built it years ago. If you're not, um, if you've never been, look it up. It's pretty cool. It's basically like a, a rich person's hobby. He collected all these historical landscape or lands, uh, land historical landmarks and had them removed onto this plot of land. So it's really, really cool. And they had to do a different um, events. This one is a Civil War reenactment. And these people actually will set up their camp. They'll cook there, eat there. Um, they bring in their kids um, of all of ages. Some people are single. Some people come in with families, even younger people. And um, they either participate in the, the civilian area or there's a whole other section where they'll um, set up barracks for the military, both the um, the north and the south. Uh, pretty cool stuff. So you know, we walked around. We went there with my son, my wife, and I with my son and uh, one of my of our friend's uh, daughter, and um, it was a lot of fun. It was a great place to you know take some photographs. Um, uh, another one too. It's like people are there because people they know people are going to take their pictures. So everybody's really cool about it. Um, I took two lenses on on this uh, trip. One was the 23 millimeter. The other was the 56 millimeter, which I'm not going to show you any of those pictures in this video. Uh, but this is pretty cool. I did black and white, and I, I started to skip around just because it was kind of, you know, um, um, you know, a time uh, dated kind of thing going back into history. I did some a uh, lot of black and whites, and also I used uh, uh, what is it where that that orangish one CPI I think it's called. You'll see one of those a bit later. Normally I don't I don't I'll do it in post, but I was playing around. I just thought it was kind of cool. And this is um, these this couple's camp here, um, and um, they had like a, a wartime surgery outfit. And um, it was pretty cool too. Um, they showed you, and they do demonstrations of how they'd amputate and what they'd give the soldiers. So if you've never been, it's it's really 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 cool. Um, and you can see it a little bit further of a shot of the whole little section they have here for that. And this is in the military area. Um, I'm not good with my north and south. I think this might be the the southern troops. Um, uh, it's hard to tell because I have it in black and white. Um, I probably should know that, but I don't. But it was pretty cool. They'll do drills and they do a reenactment on on the field, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, these are the the Southern troops, Confederates, I believe. And this just looked cool, so I took a picture of it. This is an old schoolhouse, and um, it's it just was a cool picture the way the light was hitting it. And, um, you know, uh, it's not just about people. This is kind of a do-it-all lens. 
and this is that sepia picture I was telling you about. Um, these are the Union troops, and they have the Union guys separated from the Confederate guys. And um, you know, these guys were lining up and getting ready. I just thought it was kind of a cool. Again, I don't, I don't tend to fond sepia, if I'm even saying that right. I'm doing it off of memory, very, very much. But um, I, I think it kind of looks like an old photograph. And then we popped inside. They had some um, historical type of uh, items from, from that time period. And again, this is where that F1.4 comes in uh, to shine because you can really um, um, not climb in the ISO. And this is where, if you hear me hype about the um, IBIS, where the X-T4 needs IBIS, um, you know, I was at 1.125. And I probably could have shot it at you know a lower shutter speed, but I probably walked in and didn't you know adjust my camera too much. But this is where you know shooting a static picture, I could have, especially if it was IBIS, I could have really went down and lowered my ISO. And then going outside, um, they had a play area, and my um, friend's daughter and my son they played on this you know kids center and I just wanted to show you that you can take pictures of plaques like I, I showed you and you know military people historic stuff but also at the same time take some pictures of the family and this is F, F3 I wanted a little bit of bokeh in the background and um, and yeah it, um, it and you can see the uh, shutter, piece, shutter speed because this is in more of a brighter daylight is at um, 1 over um, 1250. So a lot of cameras won't go too high in the shutter speed where the um, the X-T2 you can actually go really high and at a certain point if you run it in dual mode it'll actually click over into the e-shutter. Um, and you really, um, it comes in handy because if you're in bright daylight and you want to kick down that exposure but still shoot at a, at a high f-stop like this is 1.7 because you want to blur out the background a little bit. The only way to do that is to um, have a camera that goes high in the shutter speed. And this one is at 1 2700. So a little bit overexposed, but and these are all out of out of the camera JPEGs. I didn't um, I didn't adjust them at all. Well, I didn't adjust them for this video, I should say. And there's another picture of a camp. This uh, these people have this whole thing set up, and his wife was helping him tie his his uh, apron thing on, which is kind of a cool cool picture. You can see the no cursing, foul language prohibited prohibited. And this is a druggist. Um, uh, I don't know if this is the same. I think it's a the next ten over. They had a uh, people that would do the like our our pharmacists, but back in the old days they. They set up a demonstration. It was pretty cool. And this guy, he had some drawings and stuff. He was pretty cool. Um, uh, he was talking to kids, but he was really cool to, to take photos of. Um, I took a few of a few of them. And again, he sat with the kids and was showing them the drawings. And this picture here is taken in one of the old Model T cars. Uh, we bought some tickets to take a um, a test run, or they they take in like a lap around. Um, but again, as you can see, great for family photos and portraits. Um, it's it's really that lens that can do anything and do everything well. And just a couple more last family portraits. We got an ice cream. We we were sitting on the the uh, lawn and. Um, um, took a, and I, I was using a small flash. Um, it's been about a year and a half, two years. My son's all grown. Well, he's 13 now. So these are a little dated. Um, but um, as you can see that background, this is at 2.8. And your distance of how blurry your background is, is um, all in reference to your subject, how close you are to the subject. That, that gentleman that I took some pictures, you could see that the background really wasn't blown out too much with his, and I was shooting at a much lower aperture, but my son, I'm like a lot closer. I'm like right there, and you can see that those people in the back background from, from this picture, they're pretty much blown out. Um, they had really good ice cream. It's like a frozen custard, by the way. If you're, if you're going to go there, stop and get a frozen custard. I recommend Greenville Village. It's really cool. Uh, been there probably, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 times. 
and then this is at the same spot and again I this is where I I think I, I used um, a bit of a fill flash on some of these photos even though when the camera metadata said no um, no flash um, I don't know why it says that because I can definitely see um, it, the flash in her eye and I do remember taking a small speed light with me but again um, uh, this picture turned out really well I think other than uh, line it up with the pole in the background so this is one of those cases where you look at your surroundings um, although in this case I probably didn't have a good option um, but yeah, yeah you can see that you know it's great lens um, for family for walk around street photography it's um, got a 1.4 aperture so it's gonna give you that light when you need it but um, just take really good uh, overall great pictures so if you guys have any questions um, this lens is a great lens and I recommend it um, and uh, you know thanks for watching and if you have any questions please leave them down in the comments thanks again take care bye